Somebody's hand and let's pray. Lord, we thank you now for the word you put on my heart for today. We pray the anointing of your spirit. Lord, take us where you would have us to go. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we need you more than ever before. We humble ourselves in your presence, saying, Lord, give us that word that we need today. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout, because of who you are. You may be seated. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Luke chapter 8. The book of Luke chapter 8. And we're going to go to verse number 22. This is the story, very simple story about Jesus standing up in the middle of the storm and speaking to the storm to be still. Verse 22, it came about on one of those days that he and his disciples got into a boat and he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the lake and they launched out. But as they were sailing along, he fell asleep. Everybody say, Jesus fell asleep. And a fierce gale of wind descended upon the lake, and they began to be swamped and to be in danger. And they came to him and woke him up, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. We are being aroused. We are rebuked. And he stood up, and he rebuked the wind and the surging waves, and they stopped, and it became calm. And he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were fearful and amazed, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? I've entitled today's message, I Can Take a Licking and Keep on Ticking. Turn to somebody and say, You can take a licking and keep on ticking. God told the children of Israel to cross the Jordan River and possess the land that he had promised them. All of God's promises are for his children, but you have to go and you have to fight for them. You need to hear this word today. Just because you're saved does not mean that God brings you everything that you're in your heart. You have to learn to put faith and action together. You've got to learn to fight for what is yours in the spirit. We do not fight flesh and blood. We fight in the spirit against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness in high places. If you are going to have healing, you can't be praying a nice little prayer. Well, Lord, if it's your will to heal me, please heal me. You've got to take the word of God and you've got to work your stuff. You've got to take the word of God. You've got to speak it out. You've got to stand on the word. You've got to know what your covenant rights are. You've got to say, devil, get your hands off in the name of Jesus. And if you're going to be prosperous and blessed, you've got to put action and faith together. You've got to pay your tithes. You've got to give offerings above your tithes when God would put it on your heart. Sometimes you've got to pour out all your finances because you're believing for God to do things that you cannot do for yourself. The life of a believer is a life of overcoming obstacles. If you think that this life is going to be a life of walking in a bed of roses, you've got it all wrong. Because you now have an enemy that aligns himself against you. He'll try to make you look bad. He'll try to steal your joy. He'll try to make you think that God's forgotten about you. But the devil is a liar. You're going to have to learn to overcome obstacles. You've got to be in church on Wednesday night. You've got to get full of the Word of God. You've got to know that you're in a fight. But it's a good fight of faith that I'm going to win before this is over. Can I get a good hallelujah? Anytime you decide to believe God for his promises, great battles will come your way. God said a good man leaves, a, leaves an inheritance to his children and his children's children. In other words, if you're going to be blessed and your children be blessed, you've got to learn to put God first and you've got to learn to fight for what is yours. God tells us that his promises are for us, but we've got to fight some giants before we see them come to pass. But my Bible says, if God be for me, then who can be against me? My Bible says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not in myself, but through Christ. But I'm going to work my stuff. 
The Bible says, I am more than a conqueror. I'm not the conqueror. I am more than a conqueror because he's the conqueror and now he conquers through me. Somebody shout hallelujah. The devil's plan is for you to become very discouraged while you are in your battle. Somebody knows what I'm preaching about right now. His plan is for you to be so discouraged that you throw in the towel. The enemy's plan is to bring so much opposition your way that you just say, I quit, that's it. I'm through tithing, I'm through going to church, I'm through getting in the word. The devil's plan is to bring discouragement to you. Because you see, the enemy knows that if you quit, you are going to lose. He knows that if you don't quit, and as long as you keep on keeping on with God, he knows you're going to win before it's over. That's why he fights you the way he does. His plan is for you to become so frustrated that you go back to that old boyfriend that you know was no good for you. His plan is for you to be so discouraged that you go back to the bars or you even go back to that old lifestyle that God did deliver you from. The enemy's plan is to make you think you can't make it, but you need to know today that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises in judgment shall be condemned. I came here to tell somebody that before it's over, every one of your critics are going to have to shut their mouth because God is going to vindicate you. You may be going through something today, but before it's over, God is going to cause you to win. What you don't know is that God is in the process while you're going through something. He's in the process of strengthening you. He's in the process of developing your testimony. Can I get a witness right here? The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So God lets us go through the furnace of affliction in order to strengthen us. We don't like it, but that's the way God does it. So if you're walking by faith, you can't be discouraged because you're in the furnace. It's all part of the plan. You can't be discouraged because you're in the wilderness because it's God that chose the wilderness to take you into before you went into the promised land itself. Oh, I know you don't like the struggles, but the struggles are teaching you to trust God in a whole new way. He's showing you to get your eyes off of man, get your eyes back on God. The struggles are teaching you that in due season you shall reap your harvest as long as you don't grow weary in well-doing. The struggles are teaching you that you can take a licking and keep on ticking. I wish I had a church that knew what I was preaching in here. When God is working in your life, there will be times that you will be tested. And when God's working in your life, there'll be times that you'll go through the storms. There'll be times you'll face some giants. That's the way it is. But God wants us to grow to the point that we don't ever quit. He wants us to grow to the point that we believe in every test. He is in the process of developing a great testimony. You can't have a testimony without a test. And now that you love the Lord, you have to know that all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Somebody say, all things. All things. And since you're living your life for God's purpose, you have to believe that your steps are now ordered by God. You have to believe that God is going to cause you to win in the end. See, what I'm really talking about is faith. When I'm making these proclamations today, what I'm really talking about is faith. I'm trying to stir up your faith. I'm trying to encourage you in your faith. When I begin to say, I can take a licking and keep on ticking, really what I'm doing is encouraging myself in the Lord. What I'm really doing is building up my faith because death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'm beginning to say things even if I don't feel things because I'm getting things going in the right direction with the words in my mouth. See, I know the devil has told you that your life is over. I know he's told you that it's no use. I know you've been knocked down and you feel like you can't get back up. But I came here to tell you that the devil is a liar and you can get up. With God's help, you can do it all. Tell somebody you can get up. And since I am on the potter's wheel, I believe that he's teaching me the things I need to learn while I'm on the potter's wheel. I may not like being in the fire, but it's all going to work to my good. I may be going through something today. Things may look worse than ever. I may have more questions than answers. But since the greater one lives in me, I can by faith say I can take a licking and I can keep on ticking. Tell somebody I can take a licking and keep on ticking. 
Now the Bible says that Jesus fell asleep in the boat, and when he did, a storm arose. And may I say that storms don't bother Jesus. May I say that now, you, now that you belong to him, he doesn't want you getting all upset because of the storms you're going through. He wants you to know that he's with you in the boat. He wants you to know that he's going to take you to the other side. You're all upset because of what you're going through. You're upset because of the bad report. You're upset because of what the doctor said. You're upset because of the way your husband is acting. You're upset because of the way your children have lost their minds. But God says, don't be upset because of what you're going through. I'm there with you, and I'm going to take you to the other side. If you're being tossed by the storms of life, all God wants you to do is remember that he is with you. So quit worrying about the storm and just anchor yourself, tie yourself to the Lord himself and hang on. It may get a little bit rough, but he's going to take you to the other side. Somebody shout, hang on, hang on. because you're going to make it. Uh, Paul or uh, uh, Peter said it this way. He said, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeals that have come upon you. It's all part of your growth. It's nothing but a test. God is going to get glory out of this thing before it's over. Am I preaching right this morning? Oh, make no mistake. The storm arose in order to take you out. The devil brought the storm to kill you. But when Jesus is the Lord of your life, no storm is big enough to destroy you. Just know the devil cannot win in the long run. You may be walking a hard road today. It may look like you're not making it, but I came here to tell somebody, you're stronger than you think. Greater is he that lives in you. God's going to work everything to your good before it's over. Tell somebody it's going to work out. Whatever you're going through today, just know that at some point God's going to turn it around. So don't let it get you down because everything is subject to change when you're serving the King of Kings. When Jesus appeared to the disciples after the resurrection, he walked into the room even though all the doors and the windows were shut and they were locked. And I came here to tell somebody, Jesus doesn't need an open door because he is already the door. Everything is subject to change. Can I get a good hallelujah? Oh, and let me tell you, about the time you think you've got God all figured out, about the time you think you know God and how he's going to do everything, he'll just mess up your theology. About the time you think you've got God all figured out, he'll do something crazy and mess up your formula. Just because God brought you some money last month a certain way doesn't mean he's going to do it this month the same way. See, God doesn't want you looking at formulas. He wants you to look at him, have a right relationship with him. See, one day God will have a white man lay hands on you and get you healed. And the next month he'll have a black man lay hands on you and get you healed. One day he'll have a Baptist lay hands on you. And the next day a Pentecostal lay hands on you. Am I right about it up in here? You need to know that God has his ways of blessing you. In fact, he is so big, he'll use your enemies to bless you. Because God's ways are higher than man's ways. Let me tell you, the Bible says that the king's heart is like channels of water in God's hands. In other words, the, the boss may say, you ain't going to get a raise. But God said, his heart is in my hands. I'll guide that thing the way I want it to go. You put God first. Quit worrying about the opinions of people. Be a God pleaser. Love him. Serve him. And he'll guide you right where you need to go. Oh, make no mistake, the devil has a plan to bring you down. But for every plan that he's got to bring you down, God has two plans to raise you up. See, when God says it's time for you to be blessed, no devil in hell can stop your blessing. Somebody shout glory. Glory. See, every time the devil does something to hurt you, don't take it lying down. Make up your mind to fight back. 
Go win somebody to the Lord. Go forgive somebody that's hurt you. Join the choir and sing for the Lord. Give God an extra offering. But whatever you do, when the devil does something to come at you, do something to come back at him. Tell somebody you have to fight back. Some folks say that if God really loved you, that your trouble would be over. But every once in a while, God allows trouble to get our attention. Because you know you're not doing everything right, even though you say, I just don't understand. I'm doing everything. I, I'm doing everything right. You're not doing everything right. But let's just say it this way. God will get, some, get your attention when you go through some trouble. When everything is falling apart around me, I need to remind myself that Jesus is still Lord. He is still on his throne. He is still the King of Kings. When everything is falling apart, I need to remind myself he is God all by himself. And beside him, there is no other. When the pressures of this world are about to crush me, I must remember there is a place of peace because I know the Prince of Peace. When you feel as though you're about to lose your mind, you need to know there is one that is above every circumstance, above every problem. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the joy of the world. He's Jesus all by himself. See, you can love the Lord and still have trouble in your life. You can love the Lord and, and watch the bottom fall out in your life. Lazarus loved Jesus and still died, and Jesus didn't appear for four days. But you see, God had a plan in all of that trouble. God had a plan to raise him up. And you, when you're serving God, you got to know that God's got a plan no matter what you're going through. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how bad it is. It may look like God has forgotten you, but God's going to get glory out of this thing before it's over. <laughs> Tell two people, God has a plan. God has a plan. No matter who we are, we all have times in our lives that we ask the question, why? We all have times when we wonder, God, where are you? Why didn't you do what I asked you to do? We all have times when we question the way that God does things. But always remember that God's ways are higher than man's ways. I learned a long time ago not to tell God what to do or how to do his business. He may not show up when you want him. But he is an on-time God. He always shows up on time. It may look like he's late, but God's working a plan in your life. You may be in the fiery furnace, but if you'll begin to look around, you'll see the fourth man in there with you. He is the son of God. He is there to help you through. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Can I work this for a minute right here? Even when it looks like God has forgotten you, know that God is working something out. The devil wants you to think that nothing's ever going to change. But as surely as morning follows night, as surely as spring follows winter, you need to know this too shall pass. Woo, somebody needs to get a revelation. You may be going through something, but this too shall pass. She may have told me she didn't love me anymore, but this too shall pass. I, I may have gotten fired from my job, but this too shall pass. And the doctor may have given me a bad report, but... I may be between a rock and a hard place, but by faith I say every giant is coming down in my life. Every mountain is coming down. It's only a matter of time until God turns it around. See, you got to talk to your giants. You can't be this nice little Christian. Shake somebody and say, you better wake up. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, David looked at his giant.
And he said, you come at me with a sword and a spear, but I come at you in the name of the Lord, and you are coming down this day. Sometimes you got to talk to sickness. Sometimes you got to say, the doctor gave me a bad report, but you are coming down. And sometimes you got to talk to financial problems and say, you are coming I said faith talks. Faith begins to rise up. Something begins to come out of your mouth that's not even you. Faith begins to call things that be not as though they were. I can't tell you how many times I've been between a rock and a, and a hard place. I can't tell you how many times it looked like I wasn't going to make it. But at the last minute, God stepped in. Nah, he did it for me, and he's going to do it for you. You see, some years ago, the devil came after me to destroy me, and he used people close to me to try and take me out. And they said I wasn't going to make it, but check it out, baby. I'm still here. I'm still serving the Lord. I serve a God of restoration. God gave me the most wonderful wife you could possibly have in your life. I've got two wonderful sons that are destined for greatness in the ministry. I've got a fabulous church, the best church in all of the country. God did it for me. He'll do it for you. The devil gave me his best shot, but I'm still here, baby. I could have backslid, but I'm still here. I still love God. I got knocked down, but God helped me back up on my feet. He did it for me, and he will do it for Sit down, we're not there yet. Peter got out of the boat and he began to walk on the water. He was in the middle of a great miracle and a storm blew into his life. He took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to fade. If you're in a storm today, you got to get your eyes back on Jesus. You got to get your eyes off the storm. You got to cast every care on him. Be anxious for nothing. You got to make up your mind not to panic. You got to believe in your heart that God is still in control. I feel a shout about to come on in here. See, there are times when we don't understand why we're going through certain things. And there are some things we are never going to figure out. And sometimes we just got to make a decision. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. See, no matter who we are, trouble comes to us all. But unlike the sinner that doesn't have any hope, Blessed is the man whose hope is in the Lord. I am not blessed because I got a new suit. I am not blessed because I got a ring on my finger. I am blessed because I got hope for the future. My hope is in the Lord. I'm blessed because I love God. I'm blessed because I'm going somewhere. I feel a preacher about to come on in here. I may not understand why I have to go through the storm I'm going through. But I do know that it's him that holds my future. I do know I can trust him no matter what it is. I do know that I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him until that day. And if you feel as though you're between a rock and a hard place, who am I preaching to in this house? If you feel as though you're between a rock and a hard place, don't be discouraged. Don't let it get you down. I'm telling you that everything you're going through today is only temporary. 
So whatever you do, don't give up. And whatever you do, don't give in. And whatever you do, don't quit praying. And whatever you do, don't quit knocking on that door. The problem with most people is they get discouraged and they quit just a little bit too soon. But if you don't quit, I'm telling you that God's going to bring you through. And even if your mind says you're on a sinking ship, you need to know it's not over till it's over. Don't you quit and don't you give in. The devil's trying to make you think he's winning. He's trying to make you think that there is no use in going on. He's trying to make you think that God's forgotten you. Tell two people the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Now that you're walking with the Lord, you have to know that you are stronger than you think. You are more than a conqueror. you got to know there's a fighting spirit inside every believer. You may take a licking, but you're going to keep on ticking. And even if things don't look too good, you got to remember in due season, God is going to bring you out. He who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver him out of them all. I may be in the furnace of affliction, but God is going to bring me out. Touch three people and tell them God is going to bring me out. God is going to bring me out. God is going to bring me out. See, when you love the Lord, you have to know trouble don't last always. You have to know he's working everything out. And when you love him, you have to believe that he's turning your test into a testimony. I may be going through hell and high water today, but faith says, faith speaks, faith talks. I'm coming out of this thing. You watch what God does. This is my year of a turnaround. I don't feel it. It don't look like it, but faith talks. I may be fighting some giants today, but the word of God tells me I'm in a fixed fight. As long as I don't quit, God's going to cause me to win. I can take a licking and I can keep on ticking. As long as I know that he is still with me. I can take a licking and keep on ticking because I know he will always cause me to triumph in Christ Jesus. Quit talking that poor old me talk. I can go through hell and high water when I know in whom I have believed. Amen. I can go through hell and high water when I know he loves me, then I know he can work it out. If I will diligently obey the Lord my God, he's promised to bless me. There's the problem. He said, if I would diligently obey him. So if you're not being blessed, what area of your life do you need to hand over to him? See, I can be blessed and not have a dime in my pocket. I can be blessed just because I know my victory is coming. But let me tell you, you can't curse what God has blessed because no witch and no warlock can curse what God has blessed. And because I am blessed, I can weather every storm I go through. I can take a licking and keep on ticking. See, the reason you're going through something today is because you must be going somewhere with your life. The devil doesn't fight anybody unless they're potential, unless they're going somewhere, unless they're doing something. See, when you're walking with the Lord, you can bet that he's going to take you somewhere. The ride may not be as smooth, but he's going to take you somewhere. My life may get turned upside down temporarily, but something tells me I'm going somewhere. I may be in a storm, but I'm going to make, just call me Timex. I can take a licking 
and keep on ticking. Somebody shout yes. yes. It was Friday and they crucified the Lord of glory. They nailed him to an old rugged cross. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. Uh, it was borrowed because he wasn't going to need it very long. It was Friday and everything looked bad. It was Friday and it looked like the devil had won. It was Friday and all the hopes and dreams of the disciples were destroyed. It was Friday and all of hell was dancing around the cross of Jesus Christ. And Jesus told his disciples, he says, boys, I got to hang on a cross for a while. I got some dying to do for a while, but I will be back. It may not look too good right now, but I will be back. Somebody's hanging on a cross right now. It looks like the devil's winning right now. The devil's dancing around your own cross right now. But you can say, wait a minute, devil. I may be hanging on a cross right now, but I will be back. My flesh has got to do some dying right now, but I will be back. It may be Friday in your life today. It may look like all is lost today. You may wonder where God is, but you got to know that your Sunday is coming. Your resurrection is coming. It's not over quite yet because God's going to turn that thing around. See, on Sunday, Jesus kicked the end out of the tomb. On Sunday, he beat the devil's brains in. On Sunday, he rose up over death. On Sunday, he proclaimed, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's because he's got the name that's above every name. Not the name of Buddha. Not the name of Muhammad. I didn't come here to offend anybody, but I do want you to know that Jesus has the name that'll set you free. I may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He is my rod and my staff. He comforts me. My cup overflows with joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I may be going through something right now, but Sunday's coming in my life. I may be between a rock and a hard place. It may look like there's no way out. It may be my midnight hour, but I learned a long time ago, God does his best work in the midnight hour. Do I have any witnesses in here right now? Stand to your feet and say this. Hey ho, devil. Hey ho, devil. You got to go. You, got to go. you may knock me down, may knock down, but I will get back up. I can take a licking and keep on ticking. You may send a storm my way. You may bite me, but you can't beat me. It's not going to be easy to defeat me because I am a survivor. Are there any survivors in this house? Are there any fighters in this house? Raise your hands to God right where you are. I want you to give him a war cry right where you are. 